Let's talk about college football playoff expansion. Now, I talked about it a little bit on Tuesday's show, but Chris, uh, you have not had a chance to really weigh in on this since they announced that it will be delayed through the 2026 season. Uh, Look, there was an article in the LA Times, and the headline on this article says, uh, let me scroll back up. It says, commentary, Pac-12 took heat for delaying playoff expansion, but SEC came out biggest loser. Now, basically, they're saying it's a win for the Pac-12. It's a loss for the SEC. The Pac-12 has not had a playoff participant since the 2016 season. Uh, with the way, right, I got a question. I'm going to stop. Okay. I, maybe you were about to answer this, and I just interrupted. If that's the case, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't read this article. I saw the headline, and, and I know what they're saying. My question is this: Is this one of those things where they're just calling? one guy a winner and one guy a loser, or do they actually give logic and reasoning and, and, and understanding as to how they got those names that they're calling the body? They actually give uh, good reasons behind it. and it's okay. So I shared out a tweet uh, not too long ago. I think it was the day that it was announced, and everybody had come out and written these scathing articles about how there's no leadership and you're not giving the fans what they want, et cetera, et cetera. And – how basically these conference commissioners were letting everybody down. And I just questioned it. I said, are they really letting everybody down by delaying it for two more years? But what this article explains is exactly my point in this, and that is by delaying this for two more years, you take it to the open market like you and I have talked about ad nauseum on this show multiple, multiple times. If you if you go ahead and expand in the next two seasons – then you end up with ESPN getting the exclusive negotiating rights, and they hold on to the playoff even longer. If you take it to the open market, you can get multiple networks. You can work out a whole lot of other things. And part of the reason why Jim Phillips, the ACC commissioner, wants this thing delayed is he wants some other things handled in the meantime. And they they talk about player safety and whatnot. And we can sit here and very nonchalantly say uh, they don't give a rip about player safety. But... There are ways that you can get less snaps in a game. The NFL does it. The average NFL yep. team averages 68 plays a game. The average college well, the football average team, NFL game is two and a half to three hours. The average college game is four to four and a half hours. Exactly. Well, here's the difference is teams average running 10 more plays in college than they do in the NFL. Because the the never ending clock, right? The clock just runs unless you go out of bounds or you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, last two minutes, like yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot of different ways to stop the clock, but for the most part, the clock runs, and and you get less drives, you get less plays, et cetera. If college football were to implement something along those lines, then you can get more plays taken out of a season, and then maybe the extra game doesn't hurt as much, right? Maybe it's not as crazy. There well, yeah, are ways because to at do the it. end of the day, well, hang on, it won't hurt at all because there's only two teams that are going to actually play one more game, right? right? Only, only the two champions, and, and and you're going to lose way more snaps over the course of a year than a full game's worth. You play twelve football games, forget any bowl games, forget any of that. You play twelve games where the clock is continuously running. You're easily losing a full game of snaps. I would bet the math shows that. Yes. Yes. I, I agree. If you're with talking you. about 10 to 12 snaps a, a game in the NFL, take 10 to 12, multiply it by, you know, 12 games. And you're, you're at 10 and, and 12, you're at 120 right there. You don't put on 120 snaps for the most part in the game. You're losing a full game's worth. So I'm done with the argument of player safety. Here's my, here's my problem with this, okay? Here's my complete other problem, and I'm, I'm so curious how this makes the SEC lose. Which I'm okay if you call the SEC losers. I'm not a I'm not a you know a tout for the SEC, it's my conference, but you know they screw stuff up too. Here's the deal: Why can't we do multiple things at one time? These people are so bad at problem solving; they just feel like we can only address one problem at a time. Why can't we make those changes when we institute the new playoff and say if we do this? We have to buy out of the ESPN contract for the last two years, and we have to, if we're going to expand now, we want to, what, what is it going to cost us, ESPN, to break the contract right now? You're going to be a major part, you're going to be a major contributor, and your ratings are going to go up. But you, 
you're not going to own all of it. So what is what is it going to cost us to break the contract right now? And that's like these that's are the things issue, that right? they're not even talking about negotiating or trying to do. <laughs> let's just let the clock run out. Oh, well, let's just sit on our ass and wait. And while you're doing that, you've got two classrooms of kids going through years, two seasons worth of kids going through years that are going to leave for the NFL or for, 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 for graduation and miss out on a great opportunity that they could be afforded to if you would just stop being a bitch. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see where you're coming from. So, I, I'm so, not saying the other way is the wrong way or the right way. I'm saying learn how to problem solve. Fix well, more than one thing at one time. And that's the that's the deal here. The reason why they're saying the SEC is the loser is because the SEC assumed that bringing in Oklahoma and Texas, uh, that they were going to have a 12-team playoff about the time that those two came into the league, and that, uh, you know what, we'll be able to, to fill out this playoff with SEC teams, for the most part. That's where they were going at with this, and along oh, with that, no. the money, et cetera, but, et cetera. Right? But hang on now. Okay. The SEC already already made the concession that they were going they were cool with like only three teams getting in or putting a cap on it to where, you know, one conference can't have all of the teams. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So so how does that how does that stop them from anything? You you think that because we we don't get Oklahoma and Texas in time that we're still wouldn't get three teams in? Uh, that's like we're regularly getting two teams in a four team playoff. You I dumb agree. bastards. <laughs> Like this is people. This is people that just say stuff, but they don't think about how ignorant what they're saying sounds. I so here's the thing. I don't know that it necessarily makes the SEC a loser because the SEC has been winning the entire playoff era. They're the it, it only does, conference that had missed Gary, one. Gary, you're pussyfooting around this thing. It doesn't. I don't know if it necessarily makes them. It doesn't make them a loser in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Agreed. There's there's no way to spin this where the SEC is losing. That's what I was trying to figure out. How do they think we lost in that? Well, I think what they're saying is the SEC wanted something and they didn't get it. And, and the Pac-12 no. was a okay. part of that, right? I think that's the All biggest right. thing, which is right, ridiculous. I, I, but, 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 so, but here's the thing that they don't understand and what they don't realize is, so let's say you, you just held this thing up. And for valid reasons, I think you absolutely need to, A, I want to run the clock, okay? Mainly because I ain't got four and a half hours to watch the damn football game, all right? Yeah. Like, let's get shit done faster. Everybody else is condensing things. Movies are now 90 minutes. They used to be, two, you know, two hours long. Like, everybody in the world understands this, but college football. So, run the damn clock. It'll make the game safer. It'll actually make the game more entertaining and better. Um, your, your other step is we have to break away from the ESPN owns all of it. You have to do that. So stick to those guns, but make some concessions and let's get this thing done now because here's the deal. If you think you got one over on the SEC and you just put a thumb in the eye of the SEC, what happens when the next round of negotiation comes up, all right? And the SEC says, "Mm, we've got 16 teams. We'll we'll just do our own tournament. Dan Wessel threw this idea out there. I I threw it out on Tuesday. Dan Wessel's the smartest college football writer in the country, it's not close, by the way. He has ideas that can solve most all of these problems that are well thought out. He's not bought off or paid off by anybody. And and these are just ideas that are better for the sport. And what if the SEC just says, fine, we're going to do our own tournament. Maybe we'll invite the Big 12 in since you didn't let them be a part of the alliance. We know we stole their two biggest things. But now if we attach ourselves to the hip with them, that you know, maybe we can we can rekindle that relationship. We can we can kind of be forgiven. And and maybe one of these G5 conferences steps up, plays a little bit better ball game. We'll invite them or whatever. And we just have our own tournament. We'll do it. We'll do a 12 team tournament that the country wants to see. ESPN will own it all. And then you guys can have your own little piddly conference tournament. Let's see who actually shows up. Now, here's, it's not the problem of where the eyeballs go. It's not the problem of what makes the best tournament or the playoffs. What happens is what happens when all the greatest athletes in the country say, that SEC went on ESPN, that's a much bigger deal. And we're just going to go play there. Now Ohio State is starting to – they've always been the one team that could compete with the SEC that's outside of the South. Now they start losing kids. Now all of a sudden USC starts losing kids. 
all the best athletes in the world are already coming to SEC schools over those schools for the most part. But Ohio State and USC have always kind of been on parallel. What happens when that parallel just starts moving tremendously? I agree with you. I agree. It's, it is interesting. And now, I will say this. We are only four years away from the end of that contract. Uh, we're about 24 months away from the beginning of the next round of negotiations, right? So they need to have some kind of a plan in place. But I will say this. This one needed to be unanimous. The next one does not. Uh, and I don't know what the exact number is, but this vote that just went through 8-3, to three, uh, that would pass in the next round once you get ready for the next uh, commitment that you have to make. So, uh, so we'll see what ends up happening and if they decide to do that. But if the SEC decides, hey, you know, we, we might just stick with four or we're going to make up our own playoff and, and we're, we're not worried about expanding past that. Um, because none of it hurts them. None exactly. of it hurts the SEC. No, you have 100% got that right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.